Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about ETCD, way of configuring things in the cloud. So we're going to have a solution with multiple servers that keeps configuration mode, uh, but it is pretty much just a key value store. So you could store other things in it as well. I'm excited to tell you that I partnered up with Cold Combat to bring your kid a learning opportunity. Back in my day, there was no one that could tutor me. I knew more than the teachers and I had to put in the work because there was no other option. Unlock your child's coding potential with Code Combat's live online classes. The classes are led by experts who make learning an exciting and rewarding experience. With their help, your child will work through coding challenges and feel proud of their accomplishments. Personal attention and a structured curriculum will help your child become a confident coder. I always said that I hope that you learned something today and now your kid can. Follow the link in the description and enter the promo code EXPLORER10 at checkout for a 10% discount and all subscriptions have a 30 day money back guarantee. But it's mainly used for configuration. So let's switch over to my screen here and I'm gonna start with installing it. And we are gonna install that plus curl because we are gonna use curl for storing the data. So etcd plus curl, we're gonna install it on three different servers. So I'm gonna install it on one, and this is number two, and then number three. So all of these needs to have etc installed on them. It's a pretty fast process, if I can write the password correctly. So there we go. So the first one should be done by now. Now if we look at uh, system D, um, system control start uh, etcd. We can see that it's active and running. And if we run a command called etcd control member list, we can see that this is a single member and it does haven't really connected to anything. So I could put in a value into this member but it will only be on this machine. When, what we want to achieve is to have three members that could keep track on this information. And etcd is mostly used in order to um, store information for Kubernetes, for instance, or other software that could handle that configuration, have a lot of metadata like manifest and so on. So this is a good solution to store things like that. Uh, if we check into the etcd uh, default etcd, so here we have actually all the environment variables that is used by etcd. And this is a long configuration file with a bunch of text and you can read up on this. And there is a bunch of different things to look into. Uh, one thing that is important is of course the name of the, the specific host. We need a data dir, could be interesting. If you want to have a re uh, write ahead log on a separate destination then the data there you can put it in here we can say how many snapshots we could have heartbeat and so on all of these are standard values are good here we have the uh, peer so this specific host if we're connected to multiple it should listen on port 2380 and talk to other hosts on 2380 and then we have the client url which is 2379 so that's where you connect to it when you're talking to the API and so on. And then we have max snapshot walls, uh, course, if you are going to the cross origin solution, then you might set a course so your web browser can go there. Um, and let's continue down here. We have this initial advertise peers URL, which is connected to the uh, what is talking to each other in the uh, cluster so this needs to be said as well and we, then we have also the initial cluster and this is here we have default plus an address and here we can have a comma separated list of hosts that we connect to uh, the state of the cluster should be new in most cases uh, you could set it to existing if you already have one up and running um, usually new will work for your uh, general setup. Then you need a token and this needs to be 
unique to your cluster. So if uh, somebody else goes in and talk to this cluster, it should be something that is unique so not other traffic is not interfering. And then we have client URLs. So it's an other way of uh, informa informing about where to connect to the API. And the hard part here is that both the way that the peers are talking to each other and also the API needs to be specified or else it will not work. So you need to set all these values. If you set one, you need to set the other. Um, and let's see if we have anything else here that is important to mention. Yeah, here we have the ETCD um, certificate file. So if you want to use HTTPS to connect between the peers, or connect between the, uh, the client and the host, then you need to add the certificate here, the TLS certificate. So this is for the peers to talk to each other. You could automatically generate this one. And then you have the client uh, certificate that needs to be put into here as well. So the client search, the client uh, revocation list you can have, and then you have the trusted CI file. So these are important to import if you want to have that functionality. I'm going to run over HTTP, uh, just HTTP now, but if you need to connect uh, then um, with HTTPS, then you need to set all these values. Uh, and I think that was, yeah, we, we also have these here, log outputs. If you're running over systemd like I do, you would probably want to set this etcd log outputs or else you will not have any information. You can also set the debug level, very important. Yes, and you can force a new cluster if you want the cluster to be wiped. So if you have the new flag, it will create a new cluster if it's not available already. But if it is available, it will just continue using it. But here you can force a creation of a new cluster. So let's re remove that file now and substitute it with a new one. So what I want to do now is stop this host. I want to remove that file and then I want to edit that file again. And I want to put in a bunch of these variables that we were talking about. So I will set the name etcd in one, node one. Uh, I have a new cluster data there, so I don't write to the old cluster data there, so they don't have any problems there. Then I needed to set the peers here. So this is the 2380 peer. And I also want to advertise the same there, 2380 peer. And then I have the client URLs. So I have the uh, 2379 here. And I also want to have local host or else the um, control uh, executable will not work and then i have the cluster here so i have a n1 which is 43 n2 which is 44 and n3 which is 45 and then i have the state new the cluster is etcd cluster dash one and then i have the client urls again here then 43 23 uh, 79 and my uh, log output into that directory or uh, that log file so that is my host number one then i want to do the same for n2 so i go in here i copy in the same configuration again and here i want to change to n2 i want to have 44 44 and this should be 44 and then we have the last down here 44 i've done that and let's do the same for host number three stop it and delete put in a new configuration i uh, didn't get all the lines there let's going to try again uh, whoop. there we go and this should be n3 45 and 45 45 and the last one is also 45. so now i have done that what i need to do now on all hosts is to reload the daemon uh, configuration because systemd is not reading in the configuration files again if you don't reload the system daemon even though these are environment variables it will use the old ones if we not uh, reload and then i'm going to start the con uh, cluster again and this might take a while 
for them to actually get into sync. Now it actually went pretty fast this time. If I run etc d control member list now, we can see that we have three members in this and the leader is 20, uh, 43 and the other one is followers. So if you send something into this cluster, they should be uh, able to handle it. If you have three members, they can vote on which is the right configuration. And as long as not everything goes down and you have a bunch of different <laughs> problematic part, it should be keeping in sync. Uh, we ran into a problem where we started two hosts with the same name. That will make it a, to be a split brain and you need to do something about it. Uh, but it seems to work just fine here. So let's store some data, try it out. We will run curl against the uh, 20 local host here, 2379. Uh, the version 2 of the API, we will set a key, uh, call that key message, and we will put some data there, and the data is a value of hello world. So if I store that there, we get a notification that we have set that value. Then I can run curl on this host, and I will get that value out again. If I run it on the second host, and on the third host, I have the same value. So they are in sync, they have this up and running and working. Another part that could be good to do is actually making um, a copy or a snapshot of this data because you could run into a problem where this host doesn't work anymore and so on. So a way to snapshot the configuration is to run this etcd controller api3 so you want to use the latest api and there you have a snapshot feature and i want to save it into a snapshot.db and if i run that it will create a snapshot db file with all the configuration that we have there in order to restore it we have a pretty long command for that so this is the command we have etcd snapshot restore snapshot db we are using the api3 and we will need to use sudo in order to run it or else we don't have permissions to write the file we want to use the name of this host so uh, uh, in this case we have host number one so let, well, let's do it on host number one i prepared the command for that and uh, so let's put out the snapshot there and restore it here instead so the name is host name one and the new cluster here is called new cluster and then we have the full cluster definition of all the hosts that are in the new cluster and then we have etcd cluster two so we need to have a unique identifier for this cluster and then the actual peer that i will uh, announce there and then it will create a new cluster here with three members and then I can do the same on the other two hosts and then start them up with the new cluster configuration, which I now have uh, taken from a snapshot and ready. Um, but of course this will not work because if we look in the etcd cluster here, we have my cluster, which is currently running and the new cluster I created here is owned by root. So what I need to do is also say that the directory of this new cluster is owned by etcd of course so we need to change the owner of that directory or else will not work so this is what i wanted to cover today a way of setting up etcd so you can store configuration values or other things in this object storage uh, solution and i also wanted to mention how to do snapshots and restore a snapshot if you have a fatal crash or anything like that it's good to know how do I do disaster really recover if I have a failing cluster. Um, so that is also one, something that I wanted to cover. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you liked this video. Give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.